Hey guys, it's Michael. Today is Tuesday, June 2nd, 2020, and there is a lot going on in the world today. In today's video, we're going to cover the Congressional Budget Office, who just released a report late yesterday on an economic outlook for the country and how this heavily influences a second stimulus package. We're going to go over new data that just came out from nursing homes on how the virus spreads. In addition, states reopening, and finally, the Washington Post poll on how Americans feel about reopening and prioritizing the economy versus controlling the spread of the virus. We're going to go over all of this and more in today's video. But before we get started, I want to remind everyone of the giveaway. So currently we're doing a giveaway where all you have to do to be eligible is like the video down below, be subscribed to my channel, and comment down below the three stocks I mentioned in today's video. This is a continuation of yesterday's giveaway, and I'll be announcing the winner in my second video today. So if you have not already entered, please be sure to like the video, be subscribed, and comment down below the three stocks I mentioned at the end of today's video. Anyways, let's jump right into it, and let's get into the key financial and economic news before we get into the second round of stimulus checks and the important update with the Congressional Budget Office. Yesterday, I had gone over reports from a head doctor in Milan who explained how the virus is no longer as potent, no longer as strong as it used to be. However, this claim by the doctor in Milan has been getting a lot of pushback from experts all over the world because they said as of right now, there is no proof that the virus has mutated and that it is less deadly than it used to be. They said that in the future, they expect that the virus will mutate and that it will make it less deadly for humans. But as of right now, there is no proof. Michael Ryan, a top official of the World Health Organization, said, on Monday during an online conference that we need to be extremely careful not to create a sense that all of a sudden the virus is mutated and that it's not as deadly as it used to be. He says we have to be careful because we don't want people to think that they can do more and that it is safer because the virus has not mutated and it is not safer for humans yet. Moving on, new data came out on nursing homes and how the virus has been affecting nursing homes all across the country. More than 25,000 nursing home residents and 400 staff members of nursing homes have died from the virus. Federal reports show that a total of 60,000 patients received the virus and got the virus, and 25,000 died, and 34,000 staff members got the virus, and 400 staff members died. So as you can see from the data, almost half of the nursing home residents who got the virus have died from it. This shows the extreme impact of the virus on people who are older, because if you look at the number of staff members who got the virus, only 10% who received the virus and were staff members have died from the virus, while if you were a resident of the nursing home and if you were older, it was almost 50%. And these numbers and this data represent the first official national accounting of fatalities in over 15,000 nursing homes that received Medicare and Medicaid funding. However, the total is not complete because this doesn't represent all of the nursing homes in the country. Only about 80% of the nation's nursing homes report data to the federal government, and they were only required to include cases since early May. So only 80% of the nursing homes are included in this data, and it's only taking into account cases from early May. Next up, let's get into reopening the states around the country. We have big news here. So Michigan's governor on Monday lifted the stay-at-home order for the state's over 10 million residents, as several other U.S. states announced steps to reopen businesses and public spaces. He said that groups of 100 people or less would be allowed to gather outdoors as long as they maintain social distancing. In addition to this, restaurants will also be able to open on Monday in Michigan, though the tables will have to be six feet apart to maintain that social distancing protocol. So this is big news because finally states are starting to reopen. We're starting to see every single state across the U.S. start to allow groups of people to gather as long as they're social distancing. Restaurants are opening, businesses are opening, so everything is starting to reopen. And we're starting to see the country move in the right direction. In addition to this, in New York State, Governor Andrew Cuomo, he said yesterday he showed a lot of concerns over the protests and riots that have been going on in the city. He said it could set off a second wave of the virus, and he's very concerned about this. He said he does not want the city's plan for reopening on June 8th to be harmed by all of these riots and protests going on and a second wave of infections coming back up. He wants to make sure that New York can stick to these guidelines that they've set and the plan that they've set to reopen on June 8th. Eighth. He told people that they can protest all they want, but they just need to be smart about it. And the city's public health officials 
urged anyone who does participate in protests to wear face masks, use hand sanitizer, maintain social distancing as much as possible, and get tested for the virus. They said with tens of thousands of people in one place, even hundreds of people in one place, it magnifies the risk of getting the virus because even if you're wearing a mask, even if you're using hand sanitizer, that many people in one place, it is very easy for the virus to spread and more people to get it. So they just want to encourage people to take all of the precautions they can because Governor Andrew Cuomo does not want to risk their plan for reopening on June 8th. So I'll keep you updated on what happens there. And then finally, before we get into the second round of stimulus checks and the Congressional Budget Office report, we're going to go over a Washington Post and ABC News poll. This poll was done on 1,001 U.S. adults. And in the poll, they found that Americans' viewpoints on reopening the country are starkly divided along partisan lines. So basically, if they're a Democrat or if they're a Republican. With Democrats saying that they controlling the spread of the virus is much more important than the economy. And Republicans are saying that reopening the economy, prioritizing the economy is more important than controlling the spread of the virus. So according to the poll, 57% of Americans, U.S. adults, they said that trying to control the spread of the virus is the most important thing right now. They said controlling the spread of the virus is more important than prioritizing the economy. However, while 57% of Americans and a majority of Americans are saying that it's more important to control the spread of the virus, what they are saying depends heavily on whether they're a Democrat or a Republican. 81% of Democrats say that it is more important to control the spread of the virus versus prioritizing the economy. However, only 27% of Republicans say that it is more important to control the spread of the virus than it is to prioritize the economy. So most Republicans are saying that prioritizing the economy is more important than controlling the spread of the virus. And for Democrats, they're saying the opposite. So that's important. That's something we need to keep an eye on moving forward. Now let's move on to the second stimulus package and specifically the report that the Congressional Budget Office released to Charles Schumer, who is the Senate Minority Leader last night. We're going to go over exactly what this report says and what its economic outlook for the country is because this definitely affects whether or not we will receive a second stimulus package and it will influence what the senators decide to include in the bill. So moving on, the Congressional Budget Office projected on Monday that the pandemic will inflict a devastating long-term blow to the United States. They say it'll cost the U.S. $7.9 trillion over the next decade if it's adjusted for inflation, but not adjusted for inflation. They say it'll cost the U.S. $15.7 trillion over the next 10 years. So in this report, they're projecting that it's going to cost the U.S. trillions of dollars because of the pandemic. Over the next 10 years, people are not going to be spending as much money, not going to be investing as much. And these estimates were an official tally of the damage from the crisis, according to the CBO, the Congressional Budget Office. They were reflecting expectations of consumer spending and business investments over the next 10 years and the next decade to come. In this report, they do explain though how the over $2 trillion that was spent as part of the federal government relief packages with the CARES Act and other stimulus bills has already improved the outlook for the economy in the coming years. According to the director of the Congressional Budget Office, he says that while the U.S. has spent over $2 trillion on relief packages, he says that there's a high degree of uncertainty that surrounds all of this data and this report that they just released. He explains how it remains unknown how the pandemic will unfold throughout the remainder of the year or how social distancing and any future relief packages could impact on this report. He goes on to explain how there's just a lot of uncertainty right now, how their projections may not be accurate if there's a second wave of the virus, for example, or if the federal government passes more relief and more stimulus packages because more relief could improve the outlook for the economy in the next 10 years. Or if we have a second wave of cases, that can make the outlook even worse. So he said, right now there's just a lot of uncertainty because we don't know what the federal government is going to do with a second stimulus package. And we also don't know if there will be a second wave of cases. So he said, we'll really just have to wait and see what happens with that, but that this report may not be accurate because all of this can change. The chief economist at Upwork, 
said that slower growth means higher unemployment, lower wages, and less income for people. What we are looking at is another decade of that. So he explains that over 40 million people are currently unemployed and that with slower growth, it simply is going to make all of this worse and we're not going to see a quick recovery. So he's saying that with over 10 years, it's going to be a long struggle to get back to where we were before the virus started. So this Congressional Budget Office report on the economy and the outlook of the economy was released late yesterday. The Senate Minority Leader, Chuck Schumer, he had a lot to say about this. And he said that the CBO estimates emphasize the case for a quick action in another spending bill. Because he explained how in this Congressional Budget Office report, they explained how with more federal government aid, that the outlook for the economy could be significantly better. In addition to this, Chuck Schumer also says that in order to avoid the risk of another Great Depression, the Senate must act with a fierce sense of urgency to make sure that everyone in America has the income they need to feed their families and put a roof over their heads. He said right now, this report definitely points out and definitely shows that the Senate needs to work quickly on a second stimulus package and they need to get one proposed and passed because people need the money. He said if they don't, well then this report is going to show that the outlook for the next 10 years is not going to look good. And while they can't improve it completely, he says with another stimulus package, it can look significantly better. So this is good news because the Congressional Budget Office is not taking any sides. They're simply explaining the data and explaining how the economy will look based on what we have right now and what information we can go off of right now. So this is good because hopefully it'll push the Senate to make a decision even faster. We already know that Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has said that he will talk about and they will have a second stimulus package negotiated and hopefully passed by the end of this month, but maybe this could push them to do it even faster now that we see the outlook for the economy based on the Congressional Budget Office. So anyways, that is what's going on in the world today between the Congressional Budget Office report on the economy and the second stimulus package, new data on nursing homes, states reopening, and the Washington Post poll on the viewpoints on whether or not we should reopen and prioritize the economy or if we should prioritize controlling the virus. That is all I got for you guys today, but now let's go over the three stocks that you need to mention to enter today's giveaway. So in order to enter the giveaway, make sure to comment down below General Electric, Delta, and Domino's Pizza. So those are the three stocks for today's video, and I will be announcing the winner in my video later today. So remember, in order to be eligible for the giveaway, all you need to do is like the video, be subscribed, and comment down below those three stocks. Anyways, don't forget to get your two free stocks valued up to $1,400 when you sign up for the Webull Investing app. All you need to do to get the two free stocks is download the app, deposit $100 into your account, and you'll get two free stocks valued up to $1,400. In addition to this, get one free stock when you sign up for Robinhood. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like the video down below, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.